In this video, we're going to test the normality of the errors using the residuals computed from our initial regression of y versus x1, x2, and x3. Now, before I do the normality test, I want to provide the intuition behind the normality test. So I want to first build a histogram of the residuals. That involves calculating the average, equal average, parentheses C2 to C30. The maximum, which is found by typing equal max, parentheses C2 to C30. The minimum, which is found by typing equal min, parentheses C2 to C30. Our maximum value is 16.131. Our minimum residual is negative 23.543. Now, in absolute value, this is close to 24 and that's close to 16. So I'm going to propose using, the, in the final interval of the histogram, I'm going to propose using 16 to 24. Okay, so in the first interval, I'm going to use minus 24 to minus 16. You see that right here. Minus 24 to minus 16 in the first interval. And then in the last interval, I'm going to use 16 to 24. Okay, so the width of the interval is 8. And so it makes sense. The second interval is minus 16 to minus 8. The third interval is minus 8 to minus zero, to 0. The fourth interval is 0 to 8. The fourth one is 8 to 16. And like I said earlier, the last interval, the sixth interval, is 16 to 24. Okay. And doing it this way guarantees that the smallest residual is going to be in that interval. The largest residual is going to be in this interval. Okay. So rather than counting them by hand, I'm going to go ahead and use the array command equal frequency. Okay, so I'm, I'm typing equal frequency, parenthesis, data array. What that, what that refers to is the set of residuals, comma, and then the bins array. The bins array refers to the upper limits of my intervals. And because this is a uh, an array function, I'm going to instead of hit enter, I'm going to hit Control Shift Enter. And this gives my, this yields the frequencies of each one of these intervals. So I have one residual between minus 24 and minus 16, which is the, the, the minimum residual. For example, I have eight residuals between minus 8 and 0. Uh, namely, for example, this one, that one, etc. I also have one between 16 and 24, which is the maximum. Okay. Now before I move on, I want to make sure that the frequency is at 29. I have 29 residuals, therefore it makes sense that I have, uh, my, it makes sense that my frequencies add up to 29. In this case, they do. Okay. So now I'm going to build a, the histogram, which means I'm going to highlight the frequencies. I'm going to highlight the frequencies first, insert a chart, make sure column and basic bar charts are selected, hit next, hit finish, then I'm going to clean it up by deleting that thing. Uh, get rid of the gray color. Change the color to light gray on the bars. Close the gaps between the bars because a histogram is a special form of bar graph where the width of the bars represent the width of intervals. Building a histogram in Excel is very difficult to do, especially with continuous data. The x-axis labels are difficult to define. I mean, right now I have the uh, x-axis labels as first interval, second interval, third interval, fourth interval, fifth interval, sixth interval. I would rather have this be. Uh, I'd like to have this be minus 24, minus 16, minus 8, 0. 8, 16, and 24, but that's kind of hard to do. So you got to visualize that this is a minus 24, minus 16, minus 8, 0, etc. Okay, so this 1 refers to the first interval, and that bar has got a width equal to the difference between minus 24 and minus 16. So this bar has got a width of 8. It's got a height of 1 because there's only one residual between minus 24 and minus 16. Okay. Now, 
um, I'm going to go ahead and present the formal test of normality. Okay, and there's lots of ways to test normality. Um, but the test I'm going to present is a chi-square stat that requires us to compute the kurtosis, which is found by typing equal kurt, parentheses C2 to C30. And the kurtosis tells us how sharp the peak is here. Okay, It doesn't look like it's very sharp because we only have 29 observations. But the normal distribution has got a pretty sharp peak here. So that's why the kurtosis is close to 0.162. The skewness measures the symmetry of the distribution. And to find it, you type equal skew, parentheses C2 to C30, because that's where the resi residuals are, and you'd enter. Now, the reason why it's negative 0.49, it's close to zero, because the histogram's pretty, pretty symmetric, except for this bar, right? This bar is height is six, this bar is height is five. Um, but on the other end, the minimum value is a lot further away from zero than 16 is, the maximum. So that's why the skew is pretty close to zero, but negative. Because the extreme values really affect the, the measure of skewness. Okay. Now the chi-square stat is found by taking the number of observations here, in this case 29, dividing that by the number 6, multiplying that by the skew squared, adding that to the kurtosis squared, and dividing that, dividing the kurtosis squared by 4. And we get 1.195. Now, if this, if this chi-square stat is small, the difference between the histogram and the hypothesized normal distribution is, quote unquote, small. So the smaller the chi-square stat, the smaller the difference between the histogram and a hypothesized normal distribution. Okay. Now what determines whether this is small or big? What determines whether it's small or big? Whoops. The critical value. The critical value of the test determines whether this Casper stat is small or big. To find the critical value, type chi inverse, and then you type in a probability value. I'm going to say 0.05. So we're, we're using the 5% level of significance here. And this particular chi-squared test has two degrees of freedom. And when I hit enter, I get 5.991. What that means is this number is small, which suggests that the difference between this histogram and that normal distribution is small. So we can conclude that the errors are probably normally distributed. Now, if this were larger than this number, we might have a scenario like this, where the histogram cannot be confused at all with the normal distribution. The difference between that and the normal distribution is big, which result in a big chi-square statistic. In our example, the difference between that and the normal distribution is small, so that's why this chi stat is smaller than the critical value. Hence, the errors are probably normally distributed.